Shalom, welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumari, and in this video, we'll talk about the acrostic code in the book of Lamentations. Eicha, Eicha is the name of the book of Lamentations, and we will see whether did Jeremiah actually encrypt the book. Uh, this will be in two parts. This is the first part. I will basically introduce to you the issues that we find within the book of Lamentations with regards to the acrostic code. So let's first begin with that and then come up with this question as to why are we asking did Jeremiah encrypt the book? Most likely he did and it is not yet deciphered. That's what I think. Let's start looking at the uh, at the word first, which is Eicha, means uh, how or alas. That's the title of the Hebrew book of Lamentations, uh, which of course in English it is called Lamentations, but this is the original title because the word, uh, the, the book begins with this particular word Eicha. Now, if you look at the book of Lamentations, the first verse begins with Eicha, which is with Aleph, second verse with Beth, third verse with Gimel, fourth verse with Dalet. Now, I've been making a few videos in the past uh, episodes about the acrostic code, meaning using alphabetical order for the verses, etc. Could be verses, could be anything, but in this case, the verses. In other words, each verse starts with an alphabet um, in the sequence of the Hebrew alphabet. And therefore, you see here, Lamentations has, uh, the first chapter has 22 verses. Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, in the order till Tau. So that's no problem. So far, so good. We have other portions as well in the book of Psalms, similar to this. It's not a big deal. This is not a code. All right. So now, if you get to the second chapter, what happens is that in the alphabetical sequence, the 16th and the 17th letters, if you, uh, which are Ein and Pe, are interchanged. Interchanged, so the order of them is actually changed. If you look in the first chapter, here we see Samech, Ein, Pe, uh, Tzade. Samech, Ein, Pe, Tzade. Here we have Samech, Pe, Ein, Tzade in the second chapter, whereas in the first chapter, the order is fine. Okay, why did he change the order? What does he mean by that? And then we go to the third chapter. Oh, by the way, before we go there, second chapter two has 22 letters. It's the same thing. Instead of following the sequence, he flips this ein and pe. Okay, just keep that in mind. Now we go to the third chapter. In the third chapter, we have an acrostic, but it's a triple acrostic, meaning first three verses beginning with Aleph, second three verses beginning with Beth, and the next three with Gimel, and the next three with Dalet, etc. And you would expect there are 22 letters, and so 22 times 3 is 66, and therefore you have 66 verses in Lamentations chapter 3. So far, so good, except that he has, of course, three triple acrostic instead of a single acrostic in as in chapter 1 and 2. Now, here comes the problem. Within the chapter 3, when we come to the same letters Pe and Ein, he interchanges them again. Again, he interchanges in chapter 3, right? Okay, what's going on? And then we go to chapter 4. Chapter 4, again, is a single acrostic, meaning there are 22 verses in the chapter, in chapter 4. Starts with Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Dalet, Heva, Zayn, Heth, Teth, etc. Goes on, but Samech, Ein, Pe, Tzadek, it's not Samech, Ein, Pe, it's Samech, Pe, Ein. So basically they have interchanged, he's interchanged in chapter 4 as well. And then the remaining order continues. And the last chapter, chapter 5, we come to chapter 5. Interestingly, there is no order whatsoever. No order. I mean, it doesn't start with Aleph. What's going on? What is this fellow doing? That's what you would think. 
why has he begun with uh, four chap like in an alphabetical order all over and then comes to chapter five and there is no alphabetical order well you might think maybe he has shuffled or jumbled the letters up you know to make a code people looked at it and you see there well not quite because you have several letters doubling up like for example here in this case mem is there twice and so he's not using a single letter once every time like as he has done is only 22 letters and and, and and the reason why we suspect there is a code is because he has written 22 letters just as in chapter 1 as in chapter 2 as in chapter 4 22 letters and in chapter 3 66 letters which is 22 times 3 again in chapter 5 he has 22 letters but why doesn't he have an acrostic in the fifth chapter so this is but mind-boggling so here is the uh, tradition so we'll before I just wanted to mention the tradition traditional points so we give them the credit as to what they're saying uh, this is uh, from Rashi uh, written in Moed Katan 26a they say Jeremiah originally wrote the first second and the fourth chapters here we have only a single ac acrostic right of lamentations on a scroll that was subsequently burned by Jehoiakim. So if you read Jeremiah chapter 36, it's a very interesting chapter. After the video, maybe you can uh, go and read or perhaps pause the video and uh, read that chapter where a scroll, a particular scroll. I mean, so far I began to, res uh, until I re began to research this topic, Right. I thought that the scroll that is referred to in Jeremiah chapter 6 is the book of Jeremiah itself. But the tradition here says that that is actually the book of Lamentations. And when he had written, it was, uh, you know, cut off with a pen knife and it was thrown into the fire. It was burnt by Jehoiakim and uh, this was rewritten by Jeremiah actually Baruch is the one who wrote it but uh, at the mouth of Jeremiah that is Jeremiah dictated and Baruch wrote the book when he rewrote the book they say he added the third and the fifth chapters and that explains why third chapter has triple acrostics perhaps a summation of the first the second and fourth but why did he add the fifth chapter and why is there not a code or a, a, um, acrostic in the fifth chapter these are the questions so I have these four questions really that I need to answer to myself firstly why are Ayn and Pei reversed in chapters 2 3 and 4 why a uh, second question is why are Ayn and Pei not reversed in chapter 1 which is okay it's the regular order okay they, these two are related well, the next question is why was triple acrostic used in chapter 3 perhaps the previous tradition may answer it a bit but I guess there is more to it than that I think all of them finally answered this question it has got to do with the chapter 5 everything in this has got to do with the chapter 5 the question is why is there no acrostic used in chapter 5 and is there a code in that Jeremiah is famous uh, to be using codes in fact he has used some codes called Atbash codes in the book of Jeremiah several of them are there we'll talk about them in the next episode or the subsequent edition of this particular video that I will give part two uh, but for now let's move on try to answer these questions one by one not all of them at least the first and the last okay the first and the last I won't answer be able to answer the last question completely but let's let's go through and see what is there really why are Ayn and Pe reversed in chapters 2 3 and 4 right now if you look at the alphabet alphabet gimel dalet etc here we have Ayn and Pe is the 16th and the 17th letters and the meaning is eye and mouth Ayn means eye Pe means mouth those are the actual meanings not just the letters but the, the the word ayn means eye the word pe means mouth the word resh or rosh means a head the word shin means teeth so some of these um, in fact most of the letters have actually meanings in fact all of the letters have meanings bet means house okay so just keep in mind these two letters because we're gonna 
I come across these two letters, especially the letter ein, I. Okay, what's special about it? Okay, now this is another uh, point uh, that uh, I would like to mention from the tradition. This is from Talmud Sanhedrin 104b. They say with regard to the verse, they have opened their mouths against you. This is in Lamentations 2.16. Remember this word 60, this 16th verse is actually corresponding to Ain. Instead of Ain in chapter 2, you get a pay. Rava says that the Rabbi Yohanan says, for what reason did the prophet precede the verse beginning with the letter Pe to the verse beginning with the letter Ain in several chapters of Lamentations? He's asking the same questions, uh, uh, question as we have asked. And the answer that is given is that since Pe means mouth and Ain means eye, it is for the spies who said with their mouths what they did not see with their eyes. Okay, so this is like uh, false witness. So essentially what they're saying is you utter something before you see, meaning pay before ein means mouth first, I next. So you, you open the mouth first before you see. So that's, uh, that's not right. You see first and then you open the mouth, ein and pay. That's the actual order. So when ein and pe are reversed, it means that they opened the mouth and then saw later or when they did not see. So that's what they're saying because that's what the spies, they, the spies did not give the right testimony. That's the point. Okay. So any, anyway, the, what's the crux? The crux is the order is changed means that you spoke first before you saw. Okay. Make sense? All right. Is there anything more? Now, just remember these two letters are 16 and 17 in order. So if you look at all the 16 and 17 in order, you have chapter 1 and chapter 2 and chapter 4. I have chapter 3 missing because the, the, the each one repeats thrice. And so I have just omitted for us to be able to just compare a few things here. Now, in chapter 2 and chapter 4, as we said before, the letters are reversed, so I have indicated in red, no reversal in the first chapter. Now this pe, we have a word in this same sentence. I have not written the full sentence, okay, I have just put in two or three words, sometimes four words. Pehem, meaning their mouth, their mouth. Patsu ale alaikh pehem, they opened their mouth uh, upon upon thee or, up, or against him. Okay, now if you see in the next chapter, Ain, you have Einenu, our eyes. So you have the mouth here, Pihem, you have the mouth and you have the eye. Interestingly, in the third position, he is indicating mouth and the eye. So he's telling us, yeah, it got to do with the mouth and the eye. Okay, fine. But again, that pe and ein, uh, these two are there. Okay, fine. Let's go further on. Let's try to see where does ein and pe occur. Uh, ein as in the actual word ein. What I'm trying to say is a pe letter. This is p hem, p. P hem means their, their pe, means their mouth. Einenu means their ein. Aine means plural, that is ein, that is eyes, their eyes, okay? So we're talking about spelt words for mouth and the eyes. And so if you go back again to chapter chapter 1, in the 16th verse where it starts with ein, we have eine, eine, my eyes, my eine, actually, eine, eine, my eyes, in the previous chapter, eine, no, our eyes. Here it is a knee, a knee, means my eyes, my eyes. Okay, this is first chapter. So he's bringing in the eyes against lion here. Okay, let's go to chapter two. Uh, again, he has interchanged them. We know that. P hem, that is uh, the mouth, their mouth. So he mentions the mouth against the letter P. Okay, now if you go to chapter three, we have against pe, we have pehem again. 
in chapter 3. Look at this. This is chapter 2. Patsu alaik pihem. Again, the same phrase occurs in chapter 3, verse 46. Patsu alenu. Not alaik. It's alenu upon us. Pihem. Okay. So he is mentioning the mouth here against P. And in the Ain section, there are two times he mentions Ain, Ain. But he doesn't mention Ain here. Whereas in the pe, this Pe section, in the fourth word, he mentions Ain. So he he is doing, he is sort of, he's sort of giving us some uh, key to the code he has set in. That's what I suspect. I have not cracked the code, by the way. Um, you know, I'm able to see certain things that he is trying to indicate to us, but I don't think we have quite the solution. But it is clear. So he, he, he mentions mouth here against pay. Against pay, three times ein he mentions, but actually these three eins are here. Ein, ein, ein. Okay, right. So, is it is it a phenomenon? So it occurred in chapter one. Ein against ein, no pay in the no pay, right? No no word for pay. In the second chapter again, pay against pay, p hem for pay. In the third chapter, you have both pay that is mouth and the eyes mentioned in both both cases. And in the fourth chapter, we have Ain mentioned, Ain Enu mentioned. So he, he is indeed mentioning either in the 16th verse or in the 17th verse, he either mentions an eye or the mouth. Of course, in the third chapter, it's not 16th and 17th, it is corresponding verses to pay an ayn. So basically what I'm saying is wherever the verses begin with pe and ayn, he is mentioning either pe or ayn or both in full words somewhere or the other in every chapter. And what about chapter 5? Come to chapter 5. Chapter 5 in verse 17 is supposed to be ayn because he changed, remember, in every uh, place. Uh, when he reversed this pe and ayin, ayin comes to the 17th from 16th position. So in verse 17, in Lamentations 5, oh, by the way, Lamentations 5 doesn't have any uh, code, as I said, no acrostic. But when it comes to verse 17, which, you know, according to the previous chapters, it should have ayin, he does have ayin. And in the previous verse, uh, chat, uh, verse 16, there should be ayn according to the alphabetical order, but he doesn't have ayn here. He has it in the second place. And you know what he's saying? Nafla etereth. Nafla means fallen. What is fallen? The crown is fallen. The crown is etereth, etereth roshenu. The crown of our head, that's the king, is fallen. That's what he is lamenting against. Or lamenting for. Nafla, fallen. So it's fallen. It's gone into the next one. The eye has fallen. That's the point he's making. And look again here, this ayin, you have a nenu. 17. See, he's not missing this uh, pattern at all. So go back, let's go back to chapter 1. Chapter 1, again verse 16, aine, aine, aine against ayin. Pehem against Pe in chapter 2. In chapter 3, Pehem against Pe and Aini, Aini against Ain and also Aini against P instead of Ain and one of the Ain is missing here. There, there is, well, there is no word here corresponding to Ain, but there is Ain indicated. So he is mentioning uh, all of them in cha well, chapter 1, 2, 3. In chapter 4, 2, again Ainenu against Ain. And in chapter 5, against Ayn, Eine Nu. And then in verse 16, where Ayn actually must be, he is giving it in the second word, not the first word, but then telling us in the first word, Nafla, meaning it has fallen. So he is telling us some sort of a story, some 
related to of course um, the uh, the fall of the Jerusalem fall of the temple and this is all written by Jeremiah and uh, who knows maybe he is the one who hid the ark or who told Josiah to hit the ark we don't know uh, what he was really responsible for but he's really telling us uh, a lot of things it, it looks like and we don't have the solution yet maybe there is some code in this which if deciphered could have additional uh, stuff in it I'm speculating I think it is uh, this is not normal this is not normal what I see again nafla etereth rosheno the crown is fallen so again he gets this ayn in Lamentations 5 and again verse 17 he has an ayn here again a neno that's what I mentioned earlier in chapter 5 regarding the two ayns in chapter 5 in verses 17 and 18 I think there is a corresponding verse in chapter 1 verse 16 where we read any any mine eye mine eye so I think there is probably a correspondence between Lamentations 1 16 and Lamentations 5 17 and 18 well we don't know let's ask the next question why was no acrostic used in chapter 5 is there a code Okay, now, so this is chapter 5. As we have said before, there is no alphabetic uh, order, no acrostic in chapter 5, but there are only 22 letters, meaning he is telling, hey, look for 22 letters here, or look for the key uh, for the 22 letters or whatever. Maybe something like an Athbash code or something. Okay, now what I've done is I've taken the first letters of all of these, okay? And lined them up and entered some spaces here to make sense of the words because some of these words do make sense okay so just it's, it's the same thing so basically take the first letters the 22 letters so the first letters of all these verses arrange them Hebrew obviously reads from right to left and I introduce the spaces in order to make sense of the words okay right so when there is a mem, we cut it and so we put a final mem here, similarly final half, etc. But it's they are the same uh, letters. Now do that does this have any meaning? It has some meaning. For example, zonim means fornicating. This is a, a, a participle fornicating a process of fornicating, right? And arm means people so it means fornicating people uh, fornicators that's what he's calling them I think he's basically saying something to them to the Israelites who have uh, given up on the Lord and started doing um, uh, you know idol worship etc and the next word has no meaning and uh, neither in Hebrew nor in Aramaic at least uh, as far as I've been able to search I, I don't think this has any meaning the next words could the next word could be one one means onesh sorry onesh means punishment the next word is very familiar buzz maher shalal hash buzz was the name uh, given to isaiah's son the word bash means uh, buzz not bash buzz means spoil or plunder or prey okay the next word again it doesn't have any particular meaning which means that uh, he is uh, playing with something there just giving us a clue of something uh, it but it turns out that this word and the previous word onesh are actually mirror images you see he's flipped the letters he's flipped the letters so he's telling us some sort of a code mean what, what to be flipped I think that he's actually doing all of this to give us a cipher, C-I-P-H-E-R. I don't know how people pronounce them, cipher or cipher. Uh, in the uh, encryption, like in the computer encryption, right? if you crack the code, you can basically crack all the passwords and you can, um, you know, using quantum computing, you can use a brute force approach and search all the possible combinations in, micro, in seconds uh, and crack any big password if there is a quantum computer we don't have them yet so if you use a regular computers in some cases it will take years 
to crack it. So it's not possible. Whereas, um, you know, so you need a key. You need a key for that. So Jeremiah has used Atbash codes before. So here he's not, he's encrypted in some way. And I think he is basically throwing out all clues to us here and there in order to give us the key. Uh, so what is the key? I don't know. But I can tell you that he's certainly trying to give us the key. Now the next, uh, it's, not a, it's not really a letter. Uh, it's not a word, Ayn. And uh, interestingly, uh, what is the meaning? The meaning is I, but it is not a word, it's just a letter. But this letter, interestingly, occurs the most, more fre most frequent. And in fact, it occurs exactly five times corresponding to the five chapters of his book. Ayn, Ayn, Ayn. Five times it occurs. And uh, if you see the next word, Elahach, Elohecha, you can say it's the same meaning, your God or thy God, singular. Elahach would be Aramaic. Why I'm using Aramaic? Because there is no Yod here. Uh, Elohecha. You can also point Elohecha uh, in uh, Hebrew with these letters without the Yod. You, you can point it. But there is no such a word occurring in a Tanakh. And so I looked for it and I found this one, which means exactly the same thing in Aramaic. Eloha, Elahach. Elahach means Elohecha. Thy God or your God. Okay. So essentially, if you see the whole meaning, he's saying, hey, fornicating people, punishment is coming, plunder is coming. And he says, you have probably lost your eye. Uh, you put, uh, you know, and he says, thy God. So he's telling us something, but it's not very clear what does he mean by that. But I think more than this, this bit in chapter 5 is basically a solution to some code that he has embedded in the chapter. And probably if we decipher the whole Lamentations, maybe there is a big message in that. God knows I don't no, I hope you did like this video, by the way. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like and uh, subscribe to my channel. Click the bell icon and also comment below. I will see you again in the next video. Thank you very much.